Kranringen is a Norwegian crane and heavy haulage company with close links to Mammut. This model of a Scania R620 truck comes in a box which is in the Mammut house style and it's good quality with the model nicely packaged in foam rubber. Unusually for a Mammut commissioned model there's no collector card included and there are no instructions either to deal with the small amount of assembly required. The parts in the box include the truck itself, a Mammut branded scissor lift and three bags of small parts and these include the mirrors and aerials for the cab, the parts for the stabiliser beams and some straps for attaching the load to the flatbed deck. The scissor lift comes in its own pair of plastic formers and is easily removed. So let's get on with the assembly and the first thing we'll try and fit is the roof aerials and they just press into holes in the cab roof but the fit is really a bit too loose and they'll just pop out so uh, one way around that is that you could glue them if you like gluing your models or perhaps use a little bit of plastic putty uh, in the hole and then just press the aerial in and if you tidy it up a bit it looks fine. The same process applies to fitting the main door mirrors and again a little bit of plastic putty helps the mirror stay in place and uh, you can just pop both of those in and they look fine too. There's one side mirror to add and that's a good fit into the uh, cab just above the door. The last mirror to fit is an unusual shaped one which allows the driver to see down in front of the cab and that fits in a not so obvious place but it's uh, just underneath the visor um, at the corner there is a hole and you can just kind of press that mirror in and again that's a good fit and stays in place well. There's another piece and it's made out of plastic and that just fits into place on the top of the headboard and you can just push that and it clips into place on the top there. The stabiliser beams for the high ab loader are implemented in a slightly unusual way in that they're a loose fit in their holders and so they just pop in to place and when the truck's on the road the legs are set to point upwards as shown here. The final part of the assembly is a light post for the loader crane and that just pops into a hole located behind the cab and it's a reasonable fit. We'll start the review of the detail by looking underneath the truck and the chassis is pretty good. The transmission and suspension are all modelled well. Uh, the front steering is more functionally modelled rather than modelled for accuracy. The Scania cab looks great with lots of detail. The lights are really good and it includes an accurate number plate and some of the small graphics are really very well done. The wheels are pretty good with some smart looking hubs and the tyre tread is different on the front and rear wheels and it's good to see that there's also a fleet number represented on the cab side. A good little touch is the rear facing work lights on top of the cab and the flatbed deck is all metal with the timber sections represented by some brown paint. There are good looking equipment boxes along both sides of the deck edge and moving to the rear the lights have lenses and there's a dummy towing hitch. The main stabiliser beams are metal with pins representing the pistons and the high ab itself is modelled well with some hydraulic lines at the knuckle joint. But there are no graphics on the high ab probably because the real truck actually had a fassy loader on board. The telescopic sections are mostly metal with the pistons just represented by silver bars with no cylinder jackets and the hook at the end is nice and it's metal. It's time for the features and as usual we'll start with the rolling test on the Cranes Etc test track and as expected the truck rolls along in a straight line quite well. There's no suspension on any of the wheels. Um, the link steering does work but the range of movement on it is really quite small. However if you set the steering as far as it goes and then try to um, push the model it will try to roll. It, um, th th there's quite a lot of friction as the tyres are rubbing against the wheel arches. Another feature on the truck is the tilting cab and that's been implemented really quite well because when you tip it forward it goes to a good angle and stays tipped and uh, after you've looked at the engine you can just shut the cab back up. Next up is the crane functions so we'll start by looking at the rear stabilizers. These are metal beams that just pull out and they're complete metal castings including the pads and this means you can't lower the pads to the ground in a realistic fashion. To set the front stabiliser beams to an operational position you pull them out of their slots and turn them uh, upside down 
and then slot them back in. Um, they're two stage beams so they reach out quite a long way. However they're not designed to take any load or provide any real stability to the model. This is because the pads and the pistons that fit in the end of the stabilizers are just loose parts so you can set it up to look uh, reasonably realistic but they are, they are only loose parts so they don't actually hold any load whatsoever. Moving to the crane itself, it's quite a nicely engineered part and the first thing to say is that the telescopic sections are very smooth uh, in their operation, in fact so smooth that they um, can't really hold much of a pose but we'll see a little bit more about that later. Um, the knuckle boom sections have got uh, large cylinders and they're good because um, there's enough stiffness there to be able to set them at any position that you want and at the end of the boom is a good little metal hook. The crane has full 360 degree rotation and that works smoothly so you can pose it in any position that you want to. Although the telescopic sections of the boom have very little resistance, it is possible to pose it at most angles, it just won't carry any load. The scissor lift is a Holot H15SX and is in fact a fairly old NZG model which has been produced here in Mammut colours. It's nearly all metal with good rubber tyres and screw thread stabilisers and the handrails are a little thick for 150 scale. It rolls along well enough in a straight line and if we look underneath the model there's not much detail but it does have a steering axle and the range of movement's quite good so you can push it and steer it around obstacles quite easily. Before raising the basket you need to put the stabilisers down and these are just simple uh, screw affairs and you can just lower them to keep the machine uh, stable and level. The Cranes Etc team like to get high so that's easily achieved by just pulling up on the basket and it's quite stable and goes up in a straight line which is very good and it does reach up around 26 centimeters at the maximum. At the top the work platform is adjustable with each end able to be extended out to give greater working room and you can just close it up when you're finished. When it's time to return to earth you can just push simply down on the working platform and it all folds up very smoothly uh, back to its original size. The scissor lift makes a good load for the truck and to help with this Techno have provided a couple of elastic bands to act as straps but they're a little bit crude and many collectors will prefer not to not to use those. Um, as another option you can fit a piece of a tower crane and this is a tower crane mask from a Liebherr model and as an alternative you could rest the arm of the high ab on top of the mast section. Overall this is a very smart looking model by Techno. The details, paintwork and graphics are really nice and the working features do allow some good poses to be set up. It's a limited edition very collectible model and is highly recommended. <laughs>